Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl, and it is time for another Oh So Inspired collaboration hop. I hope you'll stick around, see who inspired us this month, see the card I'm going to create, and find out how you can hop along and see all of the other team members' creations as well. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, I host and participate in the Oh So Inspired Collaboration. We take the same inspiration piece, which I'll show you here in just a minute, and we create a new project based upon it. One of the funnest things to see as you'll hop along is how even though we have the same starting point, our finished cards are going to be way different from each other. To hop along today and see what everyone else has created, you can use the hashtag in the title. And I will also add all of the videos to a playlist shortly after everyone's goes live. That will be linked in the description box below. I will also have links to each creator's channels that you can just go straight there and find the video. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see how they were inspired, and leave them some love. Now, if you're inspired to play along after you see today's inspiration piece, there is a hashtag down in the description box that you could do a video here on YouTube or share online. This month's inspiration piece is up on screen now. It was created by Carol H, who is at c.an.h on Instagram. I will have direct links to this piece in that description box so you can go check it out and leave her some love as well. For my card today, I'm going to focus on kind of making my own forest, kind of like how her background is, and I think I'm going to stick with the theme of a birthday card as well. In front of me are the main supplies I'll be using today. I'm using some goodies from a recent Tailored Expressions kit that has some tree stamps, tree dyes, and then some sentiments. For my cardstocks and my inks, I try to pick a range of greens since we're going to be stamping lots of trees. I have two from Tailored Expressions and then I have grass green from Gina K Designs. I also got out scraps of green in those same colors and a piece of craft cardstock for my card base and my card front. Now, as I get started on the process today, I will tell you about other tools and products that I bring in. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I started off by cutting my piece of craft cardstock in half at four and a quarter by 11. Then one of those halves I cut in half again so I would have a card front and a card base. Now I did go ahead and score mine so it would fold nicely, but this is definitely a step you can skip. Then it was time to start the stamping and for this I brought in my three green inks, the tree stamp set, and my card front. Now for the first stamp, I'm going to use that nice big chunky tree in the lightest ink, which is Granny Smith from Tailored Expressions. I did remember a little ways in that I need to remove the mouse pad since this is a red rubber stamp. For this first stamp, I set the tree up once, inked it up with that ink, and then stamped it. And then for the remaining stamps of that same image, I moved my cardstock around and left my stamp in place. This allowed me to get some different levels or heights of the trees and stamped across the front of this piece. For the remaining two trees, I decided that I would move the stamp each time instead of moving the cardstock. So on this middle tree, which I inked up with Gina K Designs Grass Green, when I was ready for the second impression, I brought in a piece of clear cardstock that I always keep with my Misty, and I placed that over what I had already stamped. 
Now I can place that tree where I want it for the second image, but I haven't gotten any ink onto my stamped piece. I did go ahead and clean it between, but you wouldn't really need to. And I just kept moving, inking, and stamping until I had a forest on that card front. Once that piece was finished, I brought back in those same trees that I used for the background, along with some scraps of cardstock in the same colors I stamped them in. Now I did stamp them individually here, and that was mainly because my grass green ink is a little bit drier than my tailored expressions ones, so that first one I did stamp twice. Once all of those had been stamped onto their coordinating cardstock, I brought in the coordinating dies and cut those off screen. Before I put my Misty away, I did have one more round of stamping, and that was for the sentiment. For this, I chose Happy Birthday, and I am stamping it in the darkest green that I used today, which was Sweet Basil from Tailored Expressions. This sentiment also has a coordinating die I bought, so once again, I took that off screen and did a little die cutting. Also, while I was off screen, I die cut a circle of vellum and I die cut my stamped piece with a stitched rectangle die. Now it was at this point where I realized I probably should have made a card that folded along the long edge, but I decided to just go ahead and stick with it and this will be a little bit of a unique fold. I started to play around with my cluster of trees to figure out how I wanted them arranged and where I wanted them to go, and I kind of decided that that was a lot and it covered up so much of the background I had just created. So I decided to stick with just the tall skinny tree for this card, and I'm going to save those other two for a different project. Once again, I worked on the layout of the card. I decided that I would put the tall skinny tree on top of one that I had stamped on the background, and I played with the vellum circle, moving it around, removing it to see what I liked best. Once I had a layout I wanted, I kind of figured out where on the vellum the glue needed to go so it would be hidden by the happy birthday, and I added a little to that circle. Then I added some liquid glue to the tall skinny tree and got that placed down. Not only will that adhere the tree in place, but it does help hold the vellum down as well. Before I add my happy birthday, I placed my stamped piece onto my card base and I really like how that color kind of bleeds off the edge of the front piece, but you still have the same color or that craft border on the card itself. To add a little dimension to the card, I had put some foam tape strips on the back of the sentiment, so I removed the release tape and popped that up. Then to finish the card off, I brought in some gold half pearls and added a trio around the sentiment. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I created this woodsy birthday card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit the other artists on the hop by either using the hashtag in the title or the playlist, which I will have linked as an end card in just a second. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.